Hi, welcome to week five of our Tales and Tales Summer Library Program. This week we're going to be talking about feathers and wings. We're going to be on the search, on the hunt for butterflies and birds. And this is your weekly packet. It's got this bright yellow cover. It's got a lot of cool activities and things to do about birds and butterflies. We hope this week that you'll be um, go outside and search for some butterflies, birds, caterpillars, and uh, maybe you'll find some beautiful things in your own backyard. This beautiful butterfly is called a monarch, and they migrate to the United States every year, the southern United States from South America and Mexico. So you might see a monarch butterfly. This beautiful butterfly is called a blue morpho. You might find one of those. This one, these are some birds that you might see. This is the red-headed woodpecker. I bet you've seen those in your yard or near your home. You probably heard one pecking on a tree or a light post. This is a blue jay. Uh, the male blue jay has this bright blue color. This is a robin. Sometimes they're called a robin red, red breast. And this is a cardinal or a red bird. And these are all birds and butterflies that can be found in our area. So I hope this week you'll go out and look around and see if you can find any butterflies or birds in your near your home. Hi, our first book this week is called Nesting by Henry Cole, and it's published by Catherine Tegan Books. And this is a story about robins. We just saw a picture of a robin. It is an early spring morning. The ground is covered with frost. From the branch of an apple tree, a robin starts to sing. His song tells other male robins, stay away. But the female robin hears his song too. Here I am, he sings. The two robins explore. One spot looks perfect and together they gather dry grass and small twigs. They begin to build a nest. When their nest is finished, it is perfect. It is just the right size and shape. The mother robin settles into it and sits quietly. She lays an egg. It is smooth and blue. She lays three more eggs. Four is perfect. She keeps the eggs warm. She is patient. Inside each egg, a baby bird is growing. The eggs begin to hatch one by one. The babies have no feathers. They are blind and defenseless when they're born and very hungry. The ju a juicy caterpillar is the perfect meal for baby robins. So is a soft worm. One afternoon, a storm comes. The wind blows and the rain pours, but the babies are kept safe and the storm passes. They are safe in their nest. Day after day, the babies need more and more food and the parents make many trips. And you see the mother and daddy robin flying back and forth, back and forth with worms and caterpillars and bugs in their mouth to feed these hungry babies. Down below, a snake sees the robin's nest. Oh no, the snake is hungry too and it climbs the apple tree. Can you see the snake down here? Oh, the snake is right by the nest. The robins fight back though. They dive and swoop and protect their babies. Can you see the robins attacking the snake? And look what happens. The snake falls down onto the ground. They don't give up until they drive the snake away. The young robins have grown bigger and bigger. They fill up the nest. They have feathers now just right for flying. One by one, they leave the nest and flap and flap and drop to the ground below. Soon they grow strong and can feed themselves. Their wings take them anywhere they want to go. It is late summer now and the days are shorter. The robins eat berries and grow fat. Now they can survive the cold winter. 
They gather together to spend the winter months together. The old nest is covered with snow. A new nest will take its place when spring comes. Did you know that American Robins can be found in backyards and gardens all over North America? The male robin sings cheerful song is one of the first signs of spring each year. Robins usually build their nest in trees or shrubs, but they also use eaves of buildings, porches, the tops of light fixtures, and the female does most of the nest building using twigs and grass, and then she adds mud to make it strong. The female robin usually lays four eggs, that's the most common, and she sits on the eggs for about two weeks, keeping them warm so the baby chicks can grow and develop inside. When the eggs hatch, the baby robins are born blind and they have no feathers, but they are fed by their patient parents for two weeks or more until they um, at last grow their feathers and they have enough, they're big enough to fly. It's tough to be a robin because there are many predators. The robins live past their first year. Robins that live past their first year are strong and they have learned how to survive. We hope you enjoyed this book, Nesting by Henry Cole. Our second book today is A Butterfly Story by Anka Harriton. And it's published by Dutton Children's Books. It is springtime in the pasture. Birds chirp and frogs croak by the stream. A butterfly flies with the breeze. It has bright red stripes on its dark wings. The butterfly lands on a stinging nettle bush. It lays one tiny green egg on the nettle leaf and then it flies to another bush. The egg is sticks to the leaf, even in the wind and the rain. Can you see that tiny little egg? Inside the egg is a little caterpillar. A week after, after a week, it begins to move. It munches at the ribbed eggshell and splits the shell open. Then it crawls out. The tiny caterpillar is hungry. It needs to eat. Crunch, crunch. It chews the fresh green leaf. Its body is soft and fuzzy with 14 stumpy legs. To move, it pulls itself up into a loop and then pushes its long body over the leaf. The caterpillar spins a silky thread that looks like a shiny trail behind it. Crunch, crunch, five days later, the caterpillar has eaten so much, it is too big for its skin. It wriggles and finally splits it tight, its tight skin open. Then it crawls out. It puffs itself up with air and fills every fold of its scrunchy new, stretchy new skin. The caterpillar grows wider and longer, and now it is hungry again. Crunch, crunch, that caterpillar can't stop eating. After 10 days, it has eaten so much and grown so big that its skin is too tight again. The caterpillar sheds its old skin again and grows some more. During the next week and a half, the caterpillar outgrows its tight skin two more times. A bird chirps, it swoops down to eat the juicy caterpillar. But the caterpillar quick, quickly drops into the leaves below by means of the silky thread. It uses this fine thread like a rescue rope to crawl back up when the bird is gone and it's safe to return. When it is three weeks old, the caterpillar is full grown and about as big as your toe. Now the caterpillar stops eating. Deep in the branches of the nettle bush, the caterpillar weaves a small sticky bed on the back of a leaf. It clings to this bed with the back of its body and hangs with its head down. One last time, the caterpillar shakes itself and sheds its old skin. But this time, the caterpillar's new skin is different. It is tight and stiff. It is called a pupa now. For two weeks, the hard pupa does not move. It looks like a shriveled leaf. 
But that dull pupa case is hiding in, is a hiding place. Inside, the caterpillar is changing. After two weeks, the pupa twitches. Its skin cracks open. Something wet and plump crawls out. It has wings folded tightly on its back like a backpack. It takes its first breath and drops some waste. Then it pushes a special juice from its body into the veins of its wings. Slowly, the red striped wings unfold. They grow bigger and bigger while the body that carries them gets lighter and lighter. A butterfly is born. In one hour, the juice that fills the veins of its four wings will harden. The butterfly has to stretch its wings all the way out by then. Otherwise, the wings will dry folded and the butterfly will not be able to fly. Whoosh, whoosh. The butterfly moves its wings up and down and they bend in the wind but do not break. Then the butterfly spreads its wings and takes off. It dives and sails in the breeze like a living kite. Colorful powdery scales cover the wings like tiny feathers. They help the butterfly glide smoothly. They also give the wings their bright, beautiful colors. This butterfly has a hard head with two long feelers. The upper part of its body is strong and stiff like the pupa case was. The lower part of its body is soft and fuzzy like it was as a caterpillar. The butterfly lands on a flower. It uncoils its tongue, which is used like a straw to sip the flower's sweet nectar. Can you see the butterfly's tongue that's slips, sipping the nectar, drinking the nectar from the flower? One week has passed. The butterfly soars above the trees. Another red striped butterfly follows it. Later in the afternoon, the butterfly comes back to the stinging nettle bush and carefully it lays one tiny green egg on the leaf. Can you see it? In the pasture, the birds chirp, the frogs croak, and the butterfly flies away with the breeze. I hope you enjoyed the butterfly story by Anka Harriton. And now there's going to be another butterfly because the butterfly in this story laid a little egg. <laughs>